Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Questioning a better way, one gracefully disruptive conversation at a time. Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila. I'm so excited to be with you today. This is a solo cast. If you are listening and a basketball fan, this is the one for you. We've got to get on the mic and talk about the NCAA Final Four, the women's game. It's been an extraordinary couple of years, especially this past year with Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, Juju Watkins, and Paige Beckers, and so many of the teams and the coaches, Don Staley. All, all of the magic that's just been growing in the women's game has been extraordinary as a female athlete and longtime lover of all sports, but especially seeing my women's sports continue to grow and thrive and getting our young girls active in the athletic community and then keeping them there. I'm particularly passionate about the success of the basketball situation. I did grow up playing pretty much everything with three younger brothers. And then I did play basketball, play competitive basketball. I was kind of a little sprout, so I got run over and I was a shade above a bench warmer. But what an extraordinary experience I had. And looking back, I actually didn't realize how small I was. I saw a picture about a year ago of the team and uh, it looked like grown women and I looked like their kid sister. So it was always a pleasure to be in it, but love basketball, love, love what the game has done for sports everywhere. And just what sports, the Olympics gets people together, but women's basketball, we got to focus on it today. So I found this incredible article breaking down, not only what the women's game has done for us, but what the impact will be moving forward in the future. It talks about the players, a little bit of the business side as a marketing and branding professional and entrepreneur, I'm always interested on how, you know, how we're handling this, these athletes monetizing the their name, image, and likeness, NIL, and how that's going to impact. We have, you know, 17 to 26-year-olds making millions of dollars in college, and then that changes the way, you know, they go take sports professionally afterwards or they stay in. So the whole game is gracefully disrupted right now in the best way. So I'm fascinated on so many levels. I had to get on the mic and break it down with you. I hoped Many of you watched the Final Four yesterday between Iowa and South Carolina. It was extraordinary. And we just have some big, big things changing in sports, but really in society. So I'm excited about it. Let's break down the numbers. If you're wondering, you know, what does you, you know, the buzz, you watched it, you've seen and heard about Caitlin Clark. Great. She was on SNL or they, they did a parody of her. You know, if you make it on SNL, it's a big deal. But if you're really wondering, like, what is the economic and numbers in this? This is the article that we, we want to lean into. It's called Numbers Don't Lie. Women's college basketball is about to overtake the men's game in ratings and star power. So we're out here. This is never... A men versus women thing. In my eyes, any athletes that are out there and playing, I'm encouraging all of it. Men, women, non-binary, and anything else. I am here for life skills through sports, so I'm a champion of athletes in any capacity. And it's really, this article does compare the two just for numbers, but truthfully, I'm excited for the guys. I'm excited for the girls. I'm excited for everyone that participates because this is just good for society and for sports and camaraderie and business. It's a, it brings an awareness on so many levels. So let's jump in. This is powered by Dow Jones. It's by Weston uh, Blasey. Let's go. 14 million just watched Iowa play UConn, a record number for women's basketball game. And more viewers than all but one NBA Finals game last season. Until just a couple of years ago when someone said March Madness, they were only talking about the men's college basketball tournament. In fact, only two years ago, the women's tournament wasn't even allowed to use the name March Madness. But things have changed a lot since then. On April 1st, over 12 million people watched Iowa beat LSU in the Elite Eight of the 2024 NCAA tournament. Then just a few days later, the Iowa UConn Final Four game over averaged 14.2 million viewers on ESPN, the most watched women's basketball game ever. History in the making. And keep in mind, this is on ESPN. This isn't even mainstream TV. By comparison, the men's Elite Eight games averaged just 9.95 million viewers, with one game, Connecticut versus Illinois, getting 6.48 million, according to Sports Watch Media. 
Sports Media Watch. They thanks in large part to Clark and Reese and other stars like Paige Beckers, Juju Watkins. Women's college basketball has never been more popular. Could it one day rival the popularity of men's basketball? Yes, Victor Mathinson says, an economic professor at the College of Holy Cross who specializes in sports. Empathetically told Market Watch. The market or the uh, the really remarkable thing is not the comparison of the women's game to the men's college game. It's a fact that the women's game, Iowa versus LSU, outdrew every NBA finals game last year, except for one. Clark isn't just destroying the men's college side. She's destroying the NBA too. Viewership for women's college games has routinely been over 1 million this regular season. And the women's championship game last year between Iowa and LSU reached 9.9 million viewers, the best rating ever for a women's game at that time and an increase of 103 percent from 2022 uh, at 4.85 million views clark isn't just destroying the men's college side she's destroying the nba too victor mathinson said um they're highlighting this as a quote viewership for the men's title game has not been growing in recent years in 2023 the championship game between university of connecticut and san diego state had 14.69 million views a record low according to nielsen data compiled by sports media watch the average men's championship game viewership in the 2010s was 21.6.46 million but the last five championship games have averaged just 17.2 million views in addition, some men, some men's games also benefit from being on CBS compared to the women's games, which broadcast on ESPN. More than 50% of U.S. households have now canceled their traditional cable subscription, so more Americans can access major over-the-air networks like CBS, NBC, and ABC than other channels. So that's significant. But what's the reason for the sudden bump in viewership and overall interest in women's college basketball? It is it simply that Clark is a once-in-a-lifetime player whose fans are desperate to see. Women's college basketball is in its current form and been able to produce more stars in the men's game. This is interesting. Caitlin Clark has captured the the imagination of people in a special way, Mathinson said. Earlier this season, Clark became the highest scoring Division I player ever, men's or women's. Even NBA stars LeBron James, one of the best basketball ever, agrees. You look at Angel Reese, you look at Juju Watkins, you look at Caitlin Clark, you look at Paige Beckers, James told AP about the current popularity of the women's basketball. He says, because of stars like them, you are able to build like a real iconic legacy at a program. That's what we all love about it. I couldn't name a player from the men's tournament, but I could name you many players from the women's tournament because they have been there for years, Victor says. There are some special circumstances that when Clark leaves, she may see a little bit of regression in these numbers, but not completely. It's all part of the growth and the path, he said. When Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, and Larry Bird left the NBA, they left it stronger than when they entered it. The NBA didn't completely fall off. It fell off a little bit, but the next generation of stars comes in and replaces them, and then they take it on the go. There is some superstar effect here, but there will be a new generation of stars coming in. Because of the WNBA, because the WNBA is not a high salaried league, superstars like Beckers, Reese, and Clark stick around for years, so they so a casual fan can get to get to know them. Mathinson said, "I could name a player, I couldn't name a player from the men's tournament, but I could name you many players from the women's tournament because they have been there for years. Historically, many of the best men's." College players with professional aspirations have left college without st out staying for four years. The allure of massive guaranteed contracts have made it worthwhile for these players to leave school early and take a guaranteed eight-figure payment on their first day in the NBA. This is significant. The best players in the women's college basketball, however, tend to stay in college longer, allowing for a more robust following to build. Every female player who won the NCAA W AP Player of the Year uh, award stayed in college a minimum of three years dating back to 1995. The popularity of the women's players versus men's players can be seen in the data too. Multiply top women's players over 1 million followers on social media, dwarfing their male counterparts. So the social media game has really kicked into this. You can build a following. And now that you can make money in college, it almost makes more sense to stay in college, get paid. Now that you can monetize your likeness, image, and name and versus going into the WNBA. Caitlin Clark, Paige Beckers, and Angel Reese individually have more Instagram followers than the 15 men's wooden, wooden award player of the year finalists combined. That's outstanding. 
Female players are harnessing the spotlight into business opportunities too, and many of them are securing NIL deals that are comparable to the men's players. Since 2021, college athletes have been able to make money off NIL deals, name, image, and likeness. This money is another reason why we've seen a jump in popularity for the women's game. Not only do the athletes stay longer, but they can make hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars a year while playing in college. And if they go to the WNBA, they'll make a salary of just under $80,000 a year plus sponsorship earnings. So this is great. You can stay in the game as a collegiate athlete, not go pro and get paid more. What a change in events, especially since I've been in college. This is crazy, but it's so I'm so glad to see it. Clark has made an estimated $3.1 million this year from NIL. Angel Reese has made $1.8 million, and LSU's Flage Johnson has made $1.1 million. On the men's side, Duke's Jared McCain, $1.1 million. Kentucky's Robert uh, Dillingham, $1 million. And LeBron James's son, Bronny, $4.9 million. Are the three men's players making over over 1 million uh, from the NIL. There is no reason to think that that's going to, there's no reason to think that's not going to continue, Matheson said, about female players being on par with the male players on NIL deals. They have four years to build up these fan bases, gaining TikTok and Instagram meta followers. This is something that takes time. Being on that national stage for years in a row is an important thing. Women players may get to a point near in the near future where they are making a lot more than the men's players from NIL deals thanks to the spotlight on their sport. This is super interesting because, again, it's not a men versus women thing. However, I do see more and more female athletes playing the game on a marketing and branding front. Usually the, I don't know the exact statistic, but a high percentage of uh, women are usually the ones spending the money in the household. So they control a lot of the marketing dollars. People and companies are marketing towards women. So it's interesting to see now female players take in if you have marketing branding companies aiming to secure deals with female athletes because female household um, heads of the household are women that are spending the money. I mean, it only correlates that the female players are going to be targeted more, thus more dollars are going to be put towards them. So they're going to be making more money. Very, very interesting on the business front. There's some pretty strong incentives to build an NIL following when you when you're a women player too, because your salary isn't going to be as high in the WNBA, and a majority of your compensation is going to be endorsements instead of straight salary. So putting in some extra effort into the endorsement side over playing side is worth it for a bunch of these players, he added. The starting salary for a number one overall pick in the WNBA next season is $76,535. Both Clark, Clark and Reese have publicly said that they intend to enter the WNBA draft in 2024, while Becker said she will return to UConn. South Carolina beat Iowa in the NCAA W championship game. Hand... Uh, became the 10th and became the 10th NCAA division one basketball team to go through a season undefeated. Congratulations, South Carolina, Don Staley. Let's go. Incredible. South Carolina's coach Don Staley acknowledged Clark for her contributions to women's basketball as she has accepted her trophy. I want to personally thank Caitlin Clark for lifting up our sport. Staley said after the 87 75 win over Iowa on Sunday, she carried a heavy load for our sport and is not going to stop here on a collegiate tour. When she's the number one pick in the WNBA draft, she's going to lift that league up as well. Uh, this is pretty incredible. You know, this is a quick breakdown on how the business is coming into the game. And those are just quick numbers. I wanted to keep this podcast quick and tight, just running on the buzz of all these exciting games. We got the men's championship game tonight. This podcast will, of course, come out after that happens. However, I think if you, you're a basketball fan or not, I really didn't start watching the final four of the men's or women's until about last year. I did a few years ago watch in person the men's final four with George Mason University. I think it was 2008 because that's my alma mater and we had to go support them in person. But I haven't really been tied in and I am enthralled. I watched every single minute of every game from the Sweet 16 on in March Madness for the women's basketball. And it's extraordinary to see the differences in the games and how these women are individuals. I love seeing the camaraderie with the team, coaches Supporting coaches, players supporting players. The media always tries to pin one against the other, and that's fine. But the way they spoke about each other and have played with each other for years and this mutual respect, you get on the court, it's intentional, it's personal, and they're there to compete. The second the buzzer hits, they get back into you know a cordial, a cordial, friendly mode. And this is how you see our men play in the WNB or in the NBA. And it's you know, it's all on when you're on the court. As soon as it's it's off, you drop it and you go on and it's business. And it's it's phenomenal to see our women in that 
arena, literally doing the job and, and then handling the business on the flip side. You got to remember, these are kids that are 17 to 25 years old, managing multi-million dollar deals or millions of fans or, you know, big opportunities. It's lots of pressure, massive stage. This is a lot for a young person and the way these women have handled it with grace and poise and professionalism. It's incredible. They're incredible on the mic, not only talking about their team and recapping plays and how games went, but talking about their partners. A couple of them are working with Gatorade and I, you know, the Powerade was a sponsor of the March Madness and uh, Final Four, the whole thing. And they would use a towel and cover up the Powerade bottle when they're drinking with it. All these little intentional things about just being good business people. It's just mid game. You know, you're busy. You're thinking about competing. And yet you still have this business sponsorship conversation in the back of your mind, handling it like a business professional. Uh, Ice Cube has a league, I guess. I'm not super familiar and asked Caitlin Clark, who offered $5 million. And a reporter came up to her and said, did you know Ice Cube offered you $5 million? And and I quote, she said, no, I have people for that. So here's my 20 something straight up mid game or getting ready mid warm up, being like, no, nah, I got people for that. Like we are business professional athletes in the game talking like, like business people. It's so wild to me. So it's super exciting. I hope you can feel and hear the enthusiasm in my voice. Go check out a game. I'm so excited to see what this does, not only for women's sports, but for sports in general. You see young boys walking around with Caitlin Clark's jersey on and, and women players. So they're growing up with this being normal. That's so fascinating to me. I didn't grow up with that. So it's so cool to see that now and really appreciate it and see this process happen. It's good for guys. It's good for girls. It's good for non-binary. Every human out there, life skills through sports. I'm such an advocate and it's an exciting thing. It draws revenue such and attention around such a positive thing. So, so much congratulations to Iowa, Caitlin, Juju Watkins in USC, um, South Carolina, Don, and her incredible team, uh, her recruiting, her dynamics as a coach are always impressive. And Angel Reese, LSU, Kim Mulkey, you know, I'm a fan of the outfits, all the things like we have individuals and stars in this. If you're new to these things, go check it out. There's a ton of press covered on all the numbers of the impact on this and what it is, but it's a big deal right now. The ripple effect moving forward though, down the road is amazing. I'm excited to check out the WNBA. I've never watched a game. Again, I wasn't a huge basketball fan. I'm more lacrosse and CrossFit at this point and, and what my avenues are. But I'm, I'm in. I'm so curious to see how this shakes out and how it just brings more viewers and more viewership and exposure to the women's game. I really do think this branches off. This is a whole other podcast. But with Title IX and then you had 1999 USA Women's Soccer via Ham and the whole thing. Like there's so many monumental steps that, that pave the path. For this, Cheryl Swoops, Don Saley, the, the Team USA, that's a great documentary. I think it's on Netflix of the women's basketball. They're sleeping in like dirty hotels and whatever. And they're, you know, there's a lot of adversity in their own lives. And they are blazing the trail for right now, for everything that's happening right now. So Caitlin Clark and all these incredible women are standing on the shoulders of all the women before them. And I had the privilege of competing in the NCAA for lacrosse and standing on the shoulders of all the incredible women, female lacrosse players, but all the, all the athletes that open up the doors for me. So I'm a fan. I'm, I'm excited to see about this. We'll keep a tab on this in turmeric and tequila, but these are extraordinary numbers. And it's so crazy to see how the NIL has shifted this and how the men's game, you know, they go on to N NBA and make a bunch of money. The WNBA, we'll see if their salaries start to go up, but viewership goes up. So maybe our kids will start graduating earlier to jump in to the mix in the WNBA. I don't know. We will find out, but wow, what a year for women's sports. What an event. Event. Caitlin, Juju, Angel, Flage, uh, Cardoso. There's so many athletes out there that are just changing. I'm so excited for you. And the coaches, strong women. It's uh, Iowa's coach, US, I mean, all of them. It's it's really been incredible what you've done and the leadership that the coaches exude on the sideline and the composure, even when they quote unquote lose it, it's still, it's still composed. And it's so incredible to see strong women doing their thing. So go catch a game, go, you know, WNBA and, and players coming up afterwards. If you're out there, go grab a basketball or go commit to your support. I was so inspired to get, get excited about working out the next day and just getting a focus in and getting excited to compete. So whether you're a basketball athlete or 
a CrossFitter or you're an entrepreneur or a parent or you're a coach, get excited to go compete and show up as your best self in whatever it is you do. Uh, it's just exciting. High vibes all the way around. Congratulations to all of our athletes. 2024. This is a monumental year. I can't wait to see where it goes. And we'll catch you on the flip side. And we'll stay tapped in to Women's Sports on Turmeric and Tequila. You know, longtime athlete. We're going to talk about health, wellness, community, and mental health and all the things. So be sure to check out this video on YouTube. Get us wherever you get your podcast. Like and subscribe. We are an independent podcast. We need your support, your shares. Give this to a friend. Share, share the good word. So thank you very much. We'll see you on the next episode. Cheers. Thank you for joining Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Tune in next time and don't forget to subscribe on Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen.